Franciscans and to visit with old classmates and friends and brothers and sisters and colleagues with whom I share such a strong historical bond. And I am proud to speak to an association which for so many years has committed itself to preserving the outstanding legacy of one of Sierra Leone's finest institutions, St. Francis School, founded by the Franciscan Brotherhood of the Catholic Church. As members of ONFA, we have earned the right to celebrate with great pride the fact that we are the ambassadors of such a distinguished academic tradition. For over six decades, St. Francis has been a pioneer in delivering the highest quality education in Sierra Leone. I went to St. Francis School. I grew up in the city of McKinney. And in my time, there was no more distinguished badge of honor for a teenage boy than to be called a Franciscan. So much so that in the 1980s, when students of Batch Memorial School, who wore similar uniforms, started posing as Franciscans, the school board responded by printing the Franciscan emblem on the back of our white shirt. We, see, we, we, we had to be distinguished from everyone else. We were the pride of the city and people came from all over the country to be part of the Franciscan experience. Many who came to St. Francis were attracted by the academic excellence or the stunning beauty of the campus set near the hills surrounding the city or the camaraderie and lifelong friendships. Those were all there. But what you take with you, what stays with you long after you leave St. Francis are the power and symbolism of the school anthem. No difference in tribe. We all bear in our hearts true love for the native land and our famous promise to keep the banner high. These are not just empty phrases. In their name, this school has fought to stay in the front lines of quality education through the most difficult times in our country's history. Economic collapse, war, mass migration, political turmoil, and major structural changes in the national educational system. Through it all, St. Francis has remained standing with its banner higher and higher. This has been possible largely because of the contribution of UMFA. Throughout the school's history, UMFA has been involved in everything from the recruitment of school administrators to the construction of physical infrastructure, the provision of school materials, even curriculum design. With all these great contributions, uh, we would be well within our rights to relax, even take a victory lap. But recent developments have signaled to us that as much as we have done over the years, there is so much more to do. At the time that I received the call to speak at this event, I was mulling over the situation in Sierra Leone. Examination malpractice and the mass failure of students in public exams countrywide. And as if designed to escalate the drama, the Anti-Corruption Commission responds by arresting teachers suspected of exam fraud and parading them in the streets in the full view of the whole country. Every citizen is forced to take a position either on the side of civil rights and the presumption of innocence or frustration over the failing educational system and the need for uh, drastic unconventional measures. The remarkable thing about the ACC action is that it brings to the center of the national discourse four critical issues of national development all at once. Teacher pay and benefits, quality of education, corruption, and the rule of law. As I thought about these issues, it became clear to me how interconnected they are and how education can provide the foundation to address all of them. Meaningful investment in education invariably involves improvement in teacher pay and benefits. 
better paid teachers are more motivated to help students and less motivated to engage in corruption. This, in turn, improves the quality of education. The more education, educated a population is, the more people understand and assert their rights, including the rule of law. Education is therefore the challenge of our generation. I know that we Sierra Leoneans in the United States live in a protected island of prosperity, but our lives are really part of Sierra Leone. You see, for us Africans, success is indivisible. You're not truly successful unless the whole community can share in that success. So let me ask you tonight to raise your eyes beyond the immediate material comforts of the United States to the joy that you can derive by helping to extend the opportunity of education and prosperity to those who come after you. There is no greater honor than service to others. There is no greater reward. And in Sierra Leone today, as we all know, there is no greater need. We live in a time when so many Sierra Leoneans are hurting, when economic insecurity is increasing, when the pressure simply to survive is growing. There is a tangible sense of fear and anxiety among not just the poor, but among all sections of the population. People are asking whether the democratic gains that we have made since 1996 will survive. Whether the combination of political stability and economic prosperity that we see in other parts of the world will ever come to Sierra Leone. I believe they will, but we're going to have to work a lot harder to achieve that. And that work begins in the home, in the classrooms and continues every day in our communities. This is why it is so critical for everyone to get involved. Our children have one chance to get an education. They cannot wait. We have had reform after reform and countless studies of those reforms. We have had repeated affirmations and commitments from governments to finally make education a national priority. And yet we are still waiting for the day when every Sierra Leonean child can get a quality education that prepares them for the future. For most of our children, the promise of an excellent education has simply not materialized. We remain too complacent about education. Distracted by tired arguments and divided by the politics of the day, we cannot let that happen. We need to bring a greater sense of urgency to this task based on our you know, common understanding that there is no more important work in society than to educate children and nothing should stand in our way. And we must understand that the battle for quality education is about so much more than education. It is a daily fight for the future of our country. It is the very foundation of the better life that we wish for our country. So much has been said in the course of history and by people much wiser than me about the transformation of power of education. But in the case of Sierra Leone, it bears repeating that all of our collective aspirations as a people, all of the dreams that we have fought for in the 60 years history of our independent nation, 